Alright, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. So, uh, we are going to discuss a new chapter uh, which is on uh, leadership. Uh, this is chapter 6 and this chapter is kind of like important to each and every one of you because uh, the content of this chapter is very relevant uh, to your individual assignment too uh, that you need to accomplish and submit uh, I reckon in end of this month or yes end of next month if I'm not mistaken but it is related to one of your assignments so these are the content of the chapter that we are going to discuss So let us start with the definition. Uh, leadership is the process of directing the behavior of others towards the accomplishment of some objective or causing individuals to act in a certain way or to follow a particular course. What does the definition explain is that if you are being a good leader, you can channel other people's behavior into the direction that you want them to be. You can ask them to do something beyond their expectation. Uh, that's why sometimes we can, we can see and observe that uh, for some political leaders, they have like the followers that sometimes that we cannot comprehend. Why are they doing the things that they do? Uh, that is just because of a good leadership that this person that the leader might exemplify and it uh, affect uh, some of the followers and the, those followers believe in the course of action being carried by the leader. So when we put this into the context of organization, for example, uh, having a good leader is very important. Not only that this uh, good leader can motivate your employees, but at the same time, uh, this uh, leader, an effective leader also can create a sense of culture or behavior among the employees and channeling them towards the direction that you want them to be or that you want them to go, for example. So it is a social influence process, meaning that if you are talking about leadership, there must be a follower and a, lead, uh, a leader and a follower. And meaning that we cannot have all, or everybody cannot be all leaders in a group. So if you are doing your group project, for example, uh, so there must be a follower, there must be, you need to appoint at least one leader, one, one leader for the whole group. Leadership isn't a position, title or privilege. It is a responsibility and a process. Uh, it is an observable, understandable, learnable set of skills and practices available to anyone, anywhere in the organization. Meaning to say that if you are, if you feel that you are not a good leader now, uh, that is something that can be developed. We still have time. Uh, there are lots of training tools that we can uh, learn, that we can download, that we can observe, that we can read, in order for us to improve our knowledge on leadership. And leadership is the indirect ability to influence people by inspiring them to pursue goals for the benefit of the organization. So, leadership involves creating a vision of the future. Sometimes we stay in the organization not so much because of the pay, not so much because of the salary, but be we believe in the vision of the leader. We believe that by supporting whatever the course of action that the leader has presented to us, we can help these organizations and lift this organization to another level. So, uh, having a good leader is important to create a better future vision for the organization. And leaders also involve in devising strategy in order to achieve that vision. And leader also needs to communicate the vision so that everyone could understand and believe it, uh, believe in that vision. Uh, there are several uh, categories of leadership approach, uh, leadership-centered, interactive and follower-centered. We are going to discuss some of this and uh, we are going to leave some of this maybe perhaps later in different management subjects for you to explore. 
the first element of leadership is the trait approach. The trait approach uh, sees the personal characteristics of an individual as the main determinants of how successful that individual could be as a leader. The trait approach believes that leaders are born, not made. If you are born to be a leader, you are going to possess certain characteristics that would exemplify you or that would explain that you are a good leader. And researchers have taken two approaches comparing the traits of those who have emerged as leaders with the traits of those who have not. So apa yang diorang buat in the early days, they studied all these great leaders, they tried to look at their traits and compare them with those who are not leaders. So the, for the first approach, approach one, leaders and non-leaders. So what they have found is that leaders are found to be brighter, extrovert, extroverted, self-confident, and then uh, as compared to the non-leaders. However, they have largely failed to unco uncover any traits that clearly and consistently distinguish leaders from followers. Second, effective and ineffective leaders. Effective leaders have found to be intelligence, initiative, supervisory ability, and self-assurance, and these characteristics will associate with high managerial levels and performance. However, another studies uh, another studies found that effective leaders uh, leadership does not depend on a particular set of traits, but rather on how well the leader's traits are uh, matched with the requirement situation. Uh, so, what does it mean? Is that uh, for the second part here? And uh, they found that effective leader does not uh, depend on a particular set of traits. Sometimes that trait uh, may not be relevant in a certain situation. The trait uh, focus uh, approach assumes that some people are endowed with certain characteristics making them effective leaders. For example, uh, under the trait approach, uh, they found that leaders would possess a certain physical characteristics in terms of the height and then in terms of the personality, uh, all leaders, they have a high self-esteem and then they have a very good emotional stability. They don't have to be able to do anything, for example, and then they are very dominant. And then in terms of the aptitudes, uh, they possess a high level of intelligence. They have a verbal uh, fluency and also creativity. Another trait of successful leaders that they have found is that, yes, they have a good drive uh, in terms of the achievement, sense of responsibility. Many of the successful leaders, they are goal-getter. Uh, they tend to focus on their vision, on their goals. They have high ambitions. And then uh, the energy level is high, the tenacity, the initiative. And then they have a good level of motivation. They know on how to motivate themselves as well as others. And then they have, uh, they are honest, uh, high level of integrity. They have self-confidence as well as uh, they have conceptual ability, able to absorb knowledge and analyze internal and external environment before making any potential uh, decision with regards to the issues at hand. And then they have a good uh, business knowledge. So that's the end of the trait uh, successful of leaders. So perhaps uh, based on your observation on your exemplary leader or your famous contemporary leader that you have selected, you need to identify what sorts of traits do does this leader have or possess. And then uh, try to make your good justification or uh, support uh, for this particular leader that you have selected. The second part of the question for your individual assignment asks you to look at the behavioral approach of leadership. The behavioral approach look at what good leaders do. What are they concerned? Uh, are they concerned with getting a task done, or do they concentrate on keeping their followers happy and maintaining high morale? So in these situations, there are two major orientations. For some leaders, they are very task orientation. And for some leaders, they tend to focus on relation orientation. But don't get me wrong. Both of these orientation, the objective is still the same. To get things done. Uh, uh, to, to achieve the performance, uh, to the, the KPI being set by the organization. Uh, that's why for some people, they are focusing on the task. 
but for some people they are focusing on the on the relation orientation so one of the famous uh, theory under the behavioral approach of leadership is what we call as the behavior approach at the Ohio State University the researchers studied the effectiveness of what uh, they call as initiating structure or the task orientation and consideration structure the employee orientation uh, leadership behavior the structure behavior establishes well-defined procedures that the followers should adhere to in performing their jobs and consideration behavior reflects relationship mutual trust uh, respect warmth in the relationship between leaders and followers so meaning to say that for this type of leader yang focus pada task orientation uh, it is all about the policy it is all about the rules you cannot bend the rules you have to follow the policy the procedures and the rules that have been outlined the sop is very important to them and you need to follow whatever instructions that they have given you but for this type of leaders uh, they reflect friendship uh, the work relationship is developed based on mutual trust and understanding so they are more focused on, on employee orientation types of leadership uh, this is something that I have add on uh, into the Ohio State University, uh, University uh, model of uh, leadership. So if we go through this uh, structure, and this is the first uh, phase, high structure and low consideration, meaning that they tend to focus on high level of task orientation and low consideration. Usually this will happen when you are a newly employed employees. And uh, when we are trying to relate this with other style of leadership, so this is perhaps relevant to the telling style of leadership. Uh, when we are new, uh, sometimes it is highly structured and everything that we need to do is based on the file. Uh, we even have the dash file uh, indicating in terms of all the SOP, all the flow charts that we need to follow in order for us to complete a particular task. And then after the confirmation, after three months, after six months, and during this time, we uh, rarely meet with the top manager he or she will observe you at far he or she will get the information from your supervisor on how you are doing is there any issues is there any progress how fast that you can adapt and everything but you rarely see or meet with the top top manager and then after the conf confirmation we go into the selling part so high consideration and high structure during this time you start to develop a relationship with your top manager and then but the level of task orientation is still high and then after three years for example this is just my assumption uh, if we will go into the participating part where they started to develop a mutual understanding and belief and trust and they start to allow you to participate more so in terms of here we can see that the low structure it, it is becoming a little bit loose in terms of task orientation uh, but the level of uh, consideration, the relation orientation is still high. And after five years, seven years, for example, we tend to go into this stage, low structure, low consideration, because of why? Because we know everything, we know everybody, we know the task, we know the job, we know the people that is being affected by the task, so we know actually what to do. So you don't need that uh, high level of supervision anymore. You don't need that le high level of monitoring anymore because you can uh, be independent in the organization. So uh, that is the element of task orientation and relationship orientation, employee orientation. We will uh, see again in the next video.